And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Hypsellospinus, which was a request from Tyrant King via our Patreon and Discord. So thank you. This also goes with a request for Darwinsaurus, and they're related, so putting them together. Hypsellospinus was an iguanodontian that lived in the Cretaceous in what is now East Sussex, England. It's also possibly been found in Spain. It was first described as a species of iguanodon by Richard Lidecker in 1889, and it looks similar to iguanodon. You know, it's quadrupedal with a bulky body and a long tail. The type species is Hypsellospinus fitini, and the genus name means high thorn. That refers to its high vertebral spines. The species name is in honor of William Henry Fitton. It was a lightly built dinosaur. It was estimated to be almost 20 feet or 6 meters long. You don't hear a lot about lightly built quadrupedal dinosaurs. That's kind of weird. Might have been one of those facultative bipeds where they could spend some of the time on two legs and some of the time on four legs. Right, being an iguanodontian. It also had, quote, long, narrow, and steeply inclined neural spines. And it had a rectangular-shaped skull and a broad snout, probably for cropping plants. The fossils were first found near Rye in 1866. Then in 2010, it got the name Hypsellospinus from David Norman, who reclassified it as its own genus. The holotype of Hypsellospinus includes a left ilium, sacrum, tail vertebrae, and teeth. <laughs> That's interesting. So it's basically all right around the hips and base of the tail, and then teeth. <laughs> yeah. And the vertebrae had some unique features, which is how it became reclassified. Later in 2010, Carpenter and Ishida reclassified Iguanodon fitini to a new genus, Wadhurstia. They apparently didn't see the paper for Hypsellospinus. Yeah, well, it looks like they got published in the same year, right? And a lot of times these papers take a year or two to get through the whole review process. So yep. the Hypsellospinus one made it through the press before the Wadhurstia made yep. it out. And since Hypsellospinus was named first, Wadhurstia became the junior objective synonym. That's how you end up with stuff like Martian Cope trying to rush out names as fast as possible before the other one can publish it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that was the happening here. But no. Yeah. <laughs> no, not a hundred years after the thing was found. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't think there's a big rivalry here. <laughs> oh, true. In 2012, Gregory Paul named Darwinsaurus evolutionist based on a partial skeleton. These were also fossils that used to be classified as Iguanodon fitni that Richard Owen had described in 1842, but not everyone agrees with this. In 2015, Bexhill Museum in the UK had a Hypsellospinus skeleton on display, and it was based on more fossils found in the area, including a well-preserved tailbone. So their skeleton ended up having most of the bones, including the arms and legs. It was just missing the thumb spike. Though a specimen in the Natural History Museum of London has been found with a partial right forearm and thumb spike, and that spike was around three inches or eight centimeters long. Hmm. So turns out we have got a relatively complete skeleton. I was wondering how you knew the shape of the head from just the teeth and a little bit of the <laughs> around the hips. Yep, that's at the Bexel Museum. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 